First Enoch chapter 9. We'll read through the chapter and then we'll make some comments on chapter 9 of the book of Enoch. Then Michael and Uriel and Raphael and Gabriel looked down from the sanctuary of heaven upon the earth and saw much bloodshed on the earth. All the earth was filled with the godlessness and violence that had befallen it. And entering in, they said to one another, The earth raises the voice of their cries to the gates of heaven. And now to us, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men, make suit, saying, Bring in our judgment to the Most High and our destruction before the glory of the majesty, before the Lord of all lords. In majesty. And approaching, they said to the Lord of the ages, You are the God of gods, and the Lord of lords, and the King of kings, and the God of the ages. And the throne of your glory exists for every generation of the generations that are from old. And your name is holy and great and blessed for all the ages. For you have made all things and have authority over all. And all things are manifest and uncovered before you. And you see all things, and there is nothing that can be hidden from you. You see what Asael has done, who has taught all iniquity on the earth, and has revealed the eternal mysteries that are in heaven, to which the sons of men were striving to learn. And what Shimehaza has done, to whom you gave authority to rule over those who are with him, they have gone into the daughters of the men of earth and have laid with them and defiled themselves with the women. And they have revealed to them all sins and have taught them to make hate inducing charms. Now look, the daughters of men have borne sons from them, giants, half breeds, and the blood of men is shed on the earth and the whole earth is filled with iniquity. And now look, the spirits of the souls of the men who have died make suit, and their groan has come up to the gates of heaven, and it does not cease to come forth from the presence of the iniquities that have come upon the earth. You know all things before they happen, and you see these things, and you permit them, and you do not tell us what we ought to do with them with regard to these things. So in the prior chapters, we see that the watchers have come down. They have done what they wanted to do, and it has unleashed havoc upon the earth, the likes of which never happened before and will not happen again. And the names of the angels, it's interesting. Michael, who is like God? The meanings of the names. Uriel, the light bearer of God. Raphael, the healer of God, or God's healer, or God heals, Raphael. You think of the word Rapha, healing. Gabriel, God is my warrior. Sariel, God is my prince. And when you look into Revelation, you see uh, numbers four and seven, um, four holy ones, seven spirits of God, four and seven being very commonly seen in scripture, very significant. So as the cries of humanity went up to heaven, as they were perishing, as they were suffering, they cried out to God saying, God, where are you? What's going on? Why are you not intervening? And then the four angels looked down and they saw what was going on. And they said, the souls of men are making suit. Now, you're not making suits of clothes suitable, suit as in lawsuit. When in the book of Enoch, when you hear the phrase making suit, or I will make suit to heaven, basically it means you're making a complaint, you're making a legal action, you're making a legal appeal like a lawsuit. And so the souls of those who are perishing, the cries of humanity, are going up to the throne of God, as it were, to the courts of heaven, and saying, we are bringing a suit, we are bringing a complaint, we are bringing our cry to you, and we are appealing for intervention and justice. And they said, look at what's going on. We bring in our judgment to the Most High, and 
the men want to say, look at the destruction that's going on. When are you going to intervene against these that are too strong for us? And the angels are saying to the Lord of the ages, you're the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the King of kings, the God of the ages, and your name is holy and great and blessed. And they're basically expressing the praise and worship of the Almighty. But in verse 6, we see, you see what they have done. They've taught iniquity. They've revealed mysteries. They've taken what should not be taken out of heaven and brought it down to the earth. They have lain with the women, and now their offspring are swarming throughout the earth. You've revealed to them sins and taught them to make hate-inducing charms. This is like a witchcraft or a curse. These are the kinds of things that are going on on the earth. And the whole earth is filled with iniquity. And in Genesis 6, it talks about how in those days, the, the thoughts of everyone on the earth was only evil all the time, with the exception of Noah and his family. So in verses 10 and 11, it says, Now look, the spirits of the souls of men who have died are crying out to heaven for justice, for intervention, and their groan has come up to the gates of heaven, and it's not ceasing to come forth from the presence of the iniquities that have come upon the earth. And then they finish saying, Lord, you know what's going on. You foresee what's happening before it happens, and yet you have not yet told us what we ought to do. And so here in chapter 9, where it's a transitional chapter between 6, 7, and 8, which is talking about the activities of the Watchers and the aftermath and the devastation that's going on through the earth. And these things have never been seen. The secrets that have been revealed, the coming forth of the giants, the offspring of the Watchers and the women of earth. And the devastation, the killing, the bloodshed, the, the destruction that's going on around the world, and the cries of men, both living and dead, going up to the ears of heaven, saying, where is God? Where is the creator? Why is he not intervening? And the angels of God, Michael and Uriel and Raphael and Gabriel, and they're looking down. And they are hearing the cries of humanity. They're hearing the cries of the souls of the dead and the dying who are coming up to the gates of heaven. And then they approach the Most High. They approach the Almighty, the Creator. And they say, Lord, look at this. Listen to this. You know what's going on and you see what's happening. You understand this. You have not yet intervened. This is seen in chapter in uh, verses 10 and 11 of chapter 9. It said, Most High, what will you do? There's clearly devastation going on in the earth. You have not yet intervened, and you have not yet told us what we are to do about this. And then they wait for the Most High to speak. Now in chapter 10, the Most High will speak, and the Most High does have in mind what he will do as a result of this. And so, here in Enoch, this is a transitional, it's a pivotal chapter, chapter 9, and after all of the devastation and the plans and everything else that have gone on in chapter 6 through 8, chapter 9, it's like, where is God? Now, in the Psalms, you see it over and over. How long? How long? How long? In the book of Revelation, you see the martyrs. How long, Lord? How long? Holy and true. How long will you wait to avenge us? How long will you wait and hold off? Now, Peter tells us in Second Peter, the Lord is not slow to execute and deliver on his promises the way some people think. But he is patient. He is wanting more to come to salvation. This is, this is in the days of the early church. 
the days when Peter was writing. But here, we don't have a similar situation, but it's similar in that the souls of men are crying out to God and the angels are joining them and the angels are going. These are God's innermost advisors. These are the ones that God sends to do important work. This is the inner circle. And they are coming to God and saying, God, we can't listen to this anymore. We're waiting for you to intervene. We know that you do what is best. Abraham says, shall not the judge of all the world do right? God will do the right thing, but when will he act? And men are crying out to God. The angels are calling out to the Most High, saying, you see it, Lord, you understand. You're, you're not yet intervening. What do you want us to do? We wait to hear your word. This is a very dramatic time, and it's affecting me deeply as I'm just sitting here speaking about this chapter. So we're going to keep going in the book of First Enoch. These chapters are called the Book of the Watchers. The Book of the Watchers, chapters 1 through 36, because the watchers are either in mind doing things or they've been dealt with but it largely concerns the watchers and the aftermath of their activities on the earth and what this stirs up in the heavenlies that the Lord God will show to Enoch, Enoch being a prophet. It says in Jude, Enoch seventh from Adam prophesied. Well, now Enoch is not personally in the picture at this time, but Enoch will enter the picture in person soon. At this point, you have the four most senior, powerful, and the angels that are the closest to God, and they are approaching the throne and saying, God, we wait for your word. We wait for your intervention. And so next time, we'll take up chapter 10 and see what the Most High God will bring. We hope that you're enjoying these videos. We're enjoying making them and posting them for you so that you can get a feel for this marvelous, beautiful, prophetic, apocalyptic work called First Enoch. God bless you.